Now that I did a full review of the Playmate Shin Godzilla figure, which you can see here if you click the card above, I decided now is the perfect time to repaint the entire figure. The thing that impressed me the most about this figure, which I talked about in my actual full review of this figure, is the sculpt of it. I think it's a very good sculpt that's hidden by a lack of paint and very dark black plastic that is used. So the purpose of this project is really to just bring out the wonderful sculpt and make it a little bit more screen accurate to what Shin Godzilla really looks like in the film. I'm not doing any sort of modifications to the figure itself outside of just repainting it. This is the paint that I'll be using to prime the figure, uh, give it a nice red base coat so we could paint black on top of it so we achieve that nice natural sort of glow that Shin Godzilla has. And you can see right away, once I started spraying this figure with the red paint, how quickly the sculpt was really coming out. And this got, re got me really excited to start the project and just get really into it. This process was relatively quick. It dries really quickly. I did a couple of different light coats on top of it so it doesn't really uh, clump up and it doesn't stay wet. I made sure each time I sprayed it again that the initial coat before that would be dry. There is some black that shows through a little bit, but I didn't mind too much because I was going to paint most of this figure anyway in black, which you will see momentarily. So once this initial coat of paint was finished, it was a beautiful, vibrant red. Just take a closer look here to appreciate how the sculpt looks. You can really see all the crevices and the detailing. I really have to say that Playmates did a really nice job sculpting this figure. Um, of course, there are more expensive figures out there that are more detailed, but in terms of this being sort of like a children's toy that you could find at a Target, I think this is really impressive. This is something I touched upon a little bit in my review. Um, you know, it was hard to see the stock paint, but I saw it there. I, I knew there was a, a really nice sculpt there, and this really shows it. So once the figure was finally dry, I decided to start dry brushing using a black acrylic paint. Now, while I could have airbrushed this figure, I decided that a um, hand painting process would be a little bit better. I don't know, I just felt like I would have more control over it because of the uh, tiny crevices in between the black. That's very uh, particular. And I would have had to use probably a lot of like tape or, or some sort of uh, putty to cover up sections. I, I didn't really want to do that. So what I wound up doing was just taking a variety of different sized paintbrushes and just started uh, dry brushing the paint throughout the body here. This is actually a relatively simple process, believe it or not. Uh, I started using this flicking motion, which you should see here, that really covered a lot of surface area relatively quickly. For sections where I needed to touch it up a little bit, I used a variety of paint markers. I used a little bit of black, some white, some red, a little bit of yellow and some brown throughout the entire figure in very small sections where it needed to be very precise. Um, this was helpful to touch up sections that got a little bit messed up. For the teeth, fingernails and toenails, I sort of used a variety of colors that I built up in layers over time. You'll see the final product at the end, but what I did was sort of take white and then add some black and gray, eventually yellow, to give this very dirtied appearance that I think lends the idea of them being sort of brittle. And then this was the same process that I used for the tail as well. The tail doesn't really have the head on it and the sculpt is okay, it's very mushy looking. Uh, so I just kind of built up colors on it over time, added in some brown and some black for some shading, and it looks good. I, I do feel that that's probably the weakest portion of the entire sculpt of the figure is the tail. Um, but generally speaking, it does have that sort of grotesque appearance to it, which is what I really wanted to achieve. Of course, I left a lot of red in there and I built up those colors on top of it. So it does have a nice variety of colors there. And before I knew it, the figure was basically done. I just started to add highlights and lowlights for this, I sort of took some black, mixed it in with some lighter and darker grays. Uh, I wanted to make it very subtle, so it's not gonna be very in your face. In particular, I wanted to focus on the brows and the nose section on the head. I lightened those sections up a little bit, just so that they didn't get muddied with the rest of the face. At this point in the process, I was basically just doing touch-ups throughout the entirety of the figure, fixing up sections that got smudged up a little bit or where paint was missing, and before I knew it, the figure was ready for its final top coat.
Again, this was a simple process. I like to use a nice clear flat finish so it kind of reduces gloss on the figure and really makes the colors much more rich in my experience of using this sort of uh, finish for figures. And then it was finally complete. Overall, I'm really happy with the final results with this figure. Is it perfect? No. Is it an improvement? Absolutely. I think looking at this improved paint job now is kind of like a night and day difference from this compared to the original stock paint of the figure. Of course, the red is more evenly distributed and the black is a more appropriate shade uh, in combination with the other colors here as well. I left the dorsals with the stock paint and I think that works perfectly. Uh, honestly, I think the stock paint for the dorsals was the best part of the stock paint, and it seems to blend seamlessly with the rest of my paint job. Like I said, I think the sculpt here that I was working with was actually a really good one. You can see really now with this finished paint job, uh, the different crevices and cracks in the skin that really come through when you have that black and red combination. Let's take a look now at some before and after comparisons. I honestly had so much fun doing the repaint on this figure. It was really cool just to see how the figure over time was, you know, improving with its paint job. And I think the overall final product is pretty good. Um, I'm not gonna say it's perfect. I'm not a professional painter at all. This was kind of just a project that I decided to take on. And honestly, finishing it, I kind of want to do another Playmation Godzilla, possibly a frozen colorway. I think that would be another fun project for sure. This is going to be it for the video. I really hope you enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun making it. This was a very involved process between the actual project itself and then recording the whole thing and editing it. But this is just a passion of mine. I love Godzilla toys. If you're new to the channel and you like the content, please consider subscribing and taking a look at my other Godzilla figure content on the channel as well. Follow me on Instagram at Total Approximation, where I post Godzilla toy photography each week. And thank you for watching. Have a good one.